Let us pray. O oh Lord, help us to be alert and stay awake in this season of Advent, for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. I wonder if any of you have seen the new movie called Lady Bird. Anybody seen that show? <laughs> it's about a teenage girl who comes of age in Sacramento, California. Lady Bird isn't her real name. She's still trying to figure out who she is because she's a teenager. At her Catholic school, she acts in the school play. She goes to the prom, and generally she depicts the wonders of growing up. And one scene in the movie really stayed with me, the scene where she has a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the old wise nun who happens to be the principal of her school. The nun suggests that whatever we pay attention to will be what thrives in our life. And so the teenager says, well, what's the difference then between paying attention and loving something? And the old nun says, there really is no difference between paying attention to something and loving something. So a light bulb went off in my mind when I heard that. I said, there's something really true about that. In this movie, Lady Bird begins to pay attention to something important within herself that she wants to grow and expand and love. And she wants to go to college. So she begins focusing on things, begins paying attention to things that she'd kind of ignored before. She stops with all the distractions of her life. She focuses in on things that are more meaningful to her, on relationships, in her own family, with her friends. And she starts becoming a bigger and better person as a result. She starts to make an impact on her world in beautiful ways. And what the story tells us is that whatever we focus on has an impact, whether for good or for ill. So as we think about this new church year starting today, this new Advent season, it's a fresh beginning. I love new beginnings, don't you? It's a chance to start over. What do we want to pay attention to? Only we can decide how we're going to spend our time, what we're going to focus on. Is it going to be our usual way of doing things? Or are we drawn somehow to something bigger, something beyond ourselves, something purposeful, something holy? You know, Advent's a very short season. It's just a few weeks before Christmas is going to be here, so we don't have a whole lot of time. But we're invited to stay awake to draw closer to God and create a space within ourselves where we can be open to receive God's presence within ourselves. A holy place inside of you where the Christ child could be born. One way to develop a holy space within ourselves is to think about spiritual gifts. Are there some spiritual gifts that you'd like to develop in your life? In Galatians 5, St. Paul writes that the gifts of the Spirit are love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and gentleness and self-control. Beautiful gifts, but that's a lot to develop in just a few weeks before Christmas. So why not maybe take one gift that St. Paul mentions and think, you know, I'd really like to work on one of these. If you were going to let, ask God to help you develop one gift, one holy gift this season, what would it be? Well, when I, when I was reading over that list of love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control, the one that jumped out to me is gentleness. I thought, I'd like to work on that this season. Being gentle is a virtue lacking in our world. I should know. I learned how to drive in New York City. And I'm still a very aggressive driver. But the world needs Christians who have the strength of gentleness. Think of gentleness as an alternative to being a bully. The bully says, if I can take it with my strength and my power, then I should have it. 
By virtue of your position at work, does it mean that it's right to assault others or take anything when I want to take it? Of course not. Being gentle is a different kind of attitude. It's not based in competition or in privilege. Being gentle is based in strength. Among Christians, the gentle find their strength and their identity as people created in the image of God, people whom Jesus Christ was dying to love. Christ is our strength. Now we tend to think of gentleness as something that's weak or fragile. But as a virtue, it arises from strength, from strong people who choose to honor the sacredness of their relationships. When we take seriously the holiness of our lives, lives redeemed from everything we've done to profane that holiness, when we take seriously the holiness of our lives, what precious gifts our lives are, we're made strong in the grace of God. And those who have attended to the grace that they have received, they tend to want to be gracious toward others. In St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, he encourages us to let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. So that's not a story of the weak being victimized. It's a story of the strong choosing humility. To live in Christ is to find the same gentle calling. Later in the same epistle, Paul says, let your gentleness be known to everyone. You know, as a woman, I'm sorting out the difference between being nice and being gentle. I've been working on this uh, for some years, maybe about 30. Is there such a thing as being too nice? Overly nice people can be pushed aside. But how to express a way of being gentle that has a holy strength to it? How to express a way of being gentle without being just meek or a pushover? To be gentle and still be true to yourself, to still be true to your faith is to love the world as Christ loves the world. The president of Princeton Theological Seminary, Craig Barnes, wrote an article in Christian Century Magazine about gentleness, and he said, those of us who find ourselves in position of influence and privilege face a pressing calling to be humble and gentle towards others. If we don't give ourselves to the poor, not only will we fail to do the justice required of us, but we'll also never find the Christ who is waiting to enter that holy space within our embrace. Now, I hadn't been to a movie in a really long time when I went to see Lady Bird last week, but I appreciated this movie very much about a young woman open to growth, open to being the person that God created her to be in God's image, just like you and me. And if Advent is a time of being watchful, a time when Jesus calls us to stay awake, I think he's telling us to pay attention to how God is acting out there beyond these doors. And he's asking us to love the world as he loves the world, with a gentle strength. Amen.